thanks everyone uh, for joining the presentation. Uh, so I'm the last one between you and your lunch, so I'll be really quick to finish up my presentation. So today we are going to present our work, privacy attacks to the 4G and 5G cellular paging protocols using side channel information. This is a joint work between Purdue University and University of Iowa. Most of our co-authors are present in this conference, so if you can spot them, feel free to ask questions. Sorry. Okay. Yep. Sorry. Sorry about that. So in cellular network, uh, a device is equipped uh, with a SIM card, which gives a unique identity to the user, which we call IMSI, or International Mobile Subscriber Identity. Due to the sensitive nature of this identity, the cellular standard recommends to use a temporary identity for all future communication, which is called temporary mobile subscriber identity. And it is assigned by the core network after the mutual authentication between the device and the core network. So when the device uh, has any cellular activity, for example, phone calls or SMS, they remain connected to the network. But if there is no such cellular activity, it goes to the idle state. So now the question is, if there is any incoming services uh, during that idle time, then how the core network will notify the device that there is some incoming services? So the core network actually requests the base station to send a paging ma message, which kind of a broadcast message, and it doesn't have any authentication, and uh, the message is in plain text. So the paging message contains a list of records. Uh, uh, each of the, uh, up to, it contains up to 16 paging records, where each record is a tuple, uh, consisting of devices IMSI or TMSI, and the indication of PS, packet switch, that, it, that means 4G, or uh, CS, that is circuit switch, which refers to 2G or 3G services. So the device receiving the message, it scans sequentially the list of paging records, and when it finds a record containing the device's IMZ or TMZ, it responds back to the network and gets connected. So now let's see like how and when the device uh, wakes up and receives the paging messages. So in this idle state, a device usually sleeps and periodically wakes up uh, to monitor if there is any paging message uh, for itself. So if the network sends a paging message in, during the sleep period, the device will not respond. It, it discards that message. But if it receives that message during the monitoring phase, the re device will respond to that message. So the network and the device needs to, be, needs to be synchronized, and they need to know like when the device actually wakes up and ready to receive paging messages. So <clears throat> without loss of generality, let's assume that the time domain in 4G and 5G networks, uh, they divided into 128 system frames, where each frame is a length of 10 millisecond. So the question is uh, how it is decided, like which device will wake up at what paging occasion. So it is actually based on uh, uh, your, the device's IMSI. The last seven bits of the device IMZ decides which paging occasion as for which devices. To note that, like if two devices uh, have the same uh, last seven bits, they will share the same paging occasion. So as you can see that this paging occasion is decided uh, by the uh, IMZ, which is fixed throughout the lifetime of a SIM card. So how the attacker can exploit uh, these and uh, only knowing the victim's phone number or social network handle can identify whether the victim is present in a, tar in a particular, particular target area. If it is present, then uh, is it possible uh, for the attacker to know the victim's paging occasion? So we also refer the paging occasion as paging frame index. So this leads to our first attack, which we call torpedo, like tracking via paging message distribution. So in this attack, the adversary first observes the number of paging message arrivals in different paging occasions. So the ultimate goal of the attacker is to, is there any some way that the attacker can skew this distribution, like the benign distribution? So attacker makes a bunch of phone calls to the victim's phone number, or it may send tweets uh, to the victim's Twitter handle. So doing that, uh, the, observe, the attacker observes such skewed paging distribution. Uh, in, at, at some particular paging occasion, it observes significantly more number of paging message arrivals than the rest of the others. So by having this, the attacker can infer that victim is present in, the, in, some, in each target area. Also, it can uh, uh, know the paging occasion, or PFI, which essentially leaks some of the bits of your IMZ. 
So the question is, how many phone calls are required to perform such attacks? To know that, we propose three approaches. Uh, among them, the last one is the more efficient, but uh, the first few, two approaches are pretty interesting, but they have some kind of limitations. So in the first approach, we say that this is a kind of filtering-based approach. The, uh, the assumption is that we have a perfect delivery of paging. That means if the attacker makes a phone call, he'll be sure that uh, the paging message will be received by, by the device. So having this assumption, uh, the, uh, the idea is that uh, we'll make con phone calls and remove the set of paging occasion or PFI values that do not have any paging messages. So let's see an example. So the attacker makes continuously phone calls and, and see whether there is any particular or unique PFI that, uh, for which there is paging message for every phone calls. So in this case, 21 is the case. 21 is the paging frame index or paging occasion for the victim. So the problem is, in real life, we do not have perfect delivery of paging. Because the phone, uh, when the attacker makes a phone call, if the phone, the victim, is already connected, there will be no paging message. So for which page, the attacker will not be able to receive that. The second scenario, uh, we have observed that there are many interference or network condition for which our sniffer cannot reliably capture the paging message, messages all the time. So to address these challenges, we propose our second approach, which is a counting-based torpedo attack. And in this attack, we relax the uh, constraint for filtering-based approaches. So we say that continue making phone calls until a unique PFI is found, which satisfies this following condition. So it will look for k paging messages out of n phone calls. While this is good, uh, like it doesn't discard the victim's PFI or paging occasion at the first place, like it may happen in filtering-based approaches. But the, the best side is that it still requires a higher number of phone calls to uniquely identify paging occasion for the victim. To address all of these challenges, uh, we proposed our third approach, the most sophisticated one, based on likelihood-based analysis. So we uh, leverage a couple of intuitions uh, drawing from our experimental evaluations. So a paging message may contain up to 16 paging records, where most of the records are for packet switch or 4G networks, and few of them are for circuit switch. We also utilize the timing information uh, as a side channel. So the probability of receive, after making a phone call, the probability of receiving a paging message at uh, timestamp T2, between timestamp T2 and T3, is higher than the probability of receiving paging messages at timestamp T4. Also, we take into account the base rate, like without, like when the attacker doesn't make any phone call, so the base rate of these uh, uh, packet switch records and the circuit switch records. As you can see that circuit switch records are significantly lower than the rate of the packet switch, which makes the uh, attacker life easier to perform this attack. So taking all these things into account, uh, all this side channel information, we compute the likelihood Li, that I be the victim's P PFI. We also compute the likelihood L minus, which, uh, which is the case that uh, the victim is not present in that target area. And the, then the adversary identifies the I as the victim's PFI when the likelihood Li is way greater than the likelihood for other paging occasions. So does the attacker actually uh, identify the uh, victim's presence and also learn uh, the victim's paging occasion? So leveraging this uh, torpedo attack, we got a lead to our second attack, which is called PSR or Persistent Information Exposure, by the core network. So while analyzing the traces uh, given by the Mobile Insight tool, we have found many different network operators around the world. They, they send continuous send paging uh, containing IMZ. So we got a huge number of such cases. So to analyze the root causes for such behavior, we consulted uh, with the 3GBP standard, which is the silver standard body for the, uh, for the mo mobile network. So we found that there, the first reason is that if there is a link failure uh, during the interleaved TMZ reallocation uh, uh, and paging message, there could be some cases that the network may send paging containing IMZ. But the recent study in this 18 paper, they have shown that many network operators try to avert such complex situation. So they don't allow such overlapping. The second scenario we have got, uh, the network failure. So the standard actually doesn't specify what does it mean by network failure. Is it a crash of the mobility management entity or, or the uh, base station, which is unusual for today's actually network? So we finally resort to our uh, manual testing, where we allow an adversary to perform a multiple number of phone calls and prevent the victim device from receiving the paging message. 
Since the device doesn't respond to paging mess me message, the network uh, tries a number of times with the uh, TMZ, and after certain trials, the network tries to page the device with the victim's IMZ. So we are trying to force the network to expose the victim's IMZ. It is kind of different from the traditional IMZ catcher or, or stingray attacks. So using this uh, torpedo and the Pierce attacks, we got to our final attack, which we call IMZ cracking attack, and we'll demonstrate uh, this attack both in 4G and 5G networks. So given the soft identity, that means that your phone number, the attacker can use some public services called HLR lookup, which, uh, which allows the adversary to know the mobile country code and the mobile network code. That means in this case, it is for USA 310 and 260 is for T-Mobile. So it, uh, the adversary essentially knows the first 18 bits of devices IMZ. And with Torpedo, we can learn last seven bits. So adversary essentially has to uh, guess the 20, rest of the 24 bits. So to correctly guess, we need to build an oracle. So to build the oracle, we utilize the following intu uh, intuitions. So the device's responses to, uh, responses to a uh, paging record containing TMZ is different from uh, page, paging record containing IMZ. Also device, as you remember that the device, when a device receives paging message, it sequentially checks one by one the paging record and whenever it uh, sees whichever identity it comes first, it immediately responds back and it discards checking rest of the paging records. So exploiting this, we built this oracle. Assuming that using Torpedo, the adversary already knows the PFI or paging occasion. And using a prior attack, we already know the TMZ of a victim device. So the adversary make a guess, uh, like what would be the uh, IMZ of the victim device. And it, make a, it makes a fake paging message containing both the guest IMZ and the victim's TMZ. Remember that this ordering is important to correctly identify whether the guess is correct. So it sends that paging message to the victim, and if the guess is wrong, the victim will respond with its, uh, its TMZ. So attacker infers that this guessed IMZ is not uh, the actual victim's IMZ. So it again tries with different one, and if the victim responds with the IMZ, it can infer that the IMZ belongs to that victim. So it cracks that IMZ. So now let's see how this attack goes for, for the 5G networks. 5G, interestingly, they don't have any paging containing IMC, which is good. But can we exploit that? Yes. So we exploit page registration procedure. Uh, we essentially look for two questions. So if it, can we identify whether a guest IMC is valid? That means it belongs to the network. Then if it belongs to the network, can we particularly map to a part user? So to build this oracle, we make a fake base station, which can work as a man in the middle. Uh, it has been pre previously shown by uh, other two papers. It sits between the victim and the legitimate base station. So the fake device sends a registration request message uh, with the guest IMZ encrypted with the public net key of the, of the network. So if the, fake the attacker receives a registration reject message, it infers that the guest IMZ doesn't belong to the network. Okay, so if, if the attacker, then it again tries, and if the attacker receives an authentication challenge message, it infers that, okay, the guest IMZ belongs to someone. Now let's see the next task. So if the device, so the attacker relays that message to the victim and see the response. If the response is failure, that means the challenge couldn't be solved by the victim. So it is not the actual victim's IMZ. But if the challenge can be solved by the victim, that means it receives the response message and see like the IMZ is for the victim. So this is how uh, we crack the IMZ in 5G networks. So here's the evaluation. Uh, for Torpedo, we evaluated a number of scenarios using VOLT phone calls. Uh, here is the accuracy. As you can see, that likelihood-based approach, uh, the accuracy for likelihood approach is way better than the other two approaches. Uh, we also evaluate how many calls are required for different approaches. As you can see, with the increased missing paging rate, the call requirement goes higher. We also evaluate uh, the cases when the device is not present in the target area, then how many phone calls and what is the accuracy. So since the base rate of circuit switch fallback calls 
is kind of significantly lower. It uh, denotes the same trend, like it requires only three to five phone calls to make that attack uh, realizable. So for PSR attack, it, uh, the adversary requires one to two phone call. Uh, apart from one US network operator, we have observed the same vulnerability exists in many different network operators in uh, Europe and Asia. So for finally, like IMG cracking attacks, we required around 200K paging message to uh, guess, and it required us 74 hours. But in the paper, we have mentioned that this attack can be expedited if the attacker choose different paging parameters. One interesting finding we also observed that one of the test devices, they don't accept uh, paging message with, uh, containing 16 paging records. This is kind of an interoperability issues. So here are the impacts of our attacks. Uh, Torpedo enables paging channel hijacking, also broadcasting fake emergency alert messages. It also enables profiling cell level mobility for the user. And IMG cracking is an alternative of string gaze for uh, 4G and 5G networks. So to summarize, uh, we have analyzed and identified design flaws and deployment oversize in both 4G and 5G networks. Uh, we have uncovered three new attacks, Torpedo, Pearson, and IMG cracking. And we also proposed the countermeasure and evaluated, which you can find in our paper. So with that, I would like to thank you for your attention, and I'll be more than happy to take any questions. Hi, I'm Sao Pei from KAIST. So I have two questions sure. related to the IMZ cracking attacks on 5G. So first one is, even if it's handling the 5G, but the overall procedures seems to be validated in the 4G uh, environment. So have you tested on the 4G environment? No, we, yep. we didn't do that uh, because it needs to change your protocol a lot. So which is kind of not uh, the authentic way to validate the attack in 4G. Yeah, and then the second one, in case of when it comes to the 4G, there is a, a sequence number called NAS count, right? And in the 5G, they will definitely have. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to the URL tag and the relayed uh, messages will definitely contain NAS count or the sequence number. So I wonder, could you please, ex could you please explain more about how the UE or the client correctly handle the relayed messages? Sure, that's a great question. So paging message doesn't have any sequence number. It says shared broadcasting messages. So we, since we mostly hijack the paging messages and inject fake paging message, so we don't actually take into account the sequence number. No, I mean the relay, the authentication yeah. so request So relay attack has been realized by two papers uh, previously. One is last year in DSS, and the, another one is going to be presented this year, uh, Oakland. So relay attacks can, we have shown that relay attacks can be realizable in practice. So the sequence number is an issue, but uh, if you can clearly maneuver this attack, it is possible. Thank you. Um, hi, I'm from UF. Um, so my question is, um, in your in your IMSI cracker, um, do you have to have control of the cell tower in order to do that, or are you essentially behaving as a malicious cell tower in that instance? I'm actually behaving as a malicious cell tower, but. The, the device is not aware of anything because mm. we are hijacking the paging channel. It sees that the network is on, but mm. it is not receiving any actual paging message from the legitimate networks. Okay, thank you. Thank you all. <laughs>